The basic premise of the Four Noble Truths is that we're suffering because we're doing something wrong. But we can learn. We can do it right. We learn from people who've learned how to do it right themselves, which is one of the reasons why criticism is such an important part of the training. Because sometimes you can see your own faults. This is why the Buddha taught Rahula to look at his actions as he would look at a mirror. He'd see his intentions reflected there. He'd see his skillfulness reflected there. But Rahula wasn't left to his own devices. He saw that he'd made a mistake, or he suspected he might have made a mistake. He was to go and talk it over with someone more advanced on the path. And that person could help point out where Rahula had gone, where he'd gone wrong. This is why we have the Sangha. Otherwise, people would just go out and practice on their own, thinking that they could depend on themselves. But you need the eyes of somebody else. There's a lot of yourself that you can't even see. How many parts of your body can you actually see? There are a lot, many parts that to see you would have to have a mirror or two mirrors. But to look at them directly requires somebody else. You see this principle in the teaching of the Kalamas. The Buddha starts out by saying, when you know for yourselves that something is unskillful, then you should avoid it. If something is skillful, you should develop it. But he doesn't start by saying simply skillful. He says something is praised by the wise. That's something to follow. Something is criticized by the wise. That's something to avoid. So again, you're depending on the, the insights of others, people who have more experience than you do. And you should treasure their their criticisms. Not feel like you've been unfairly singled out. As the Buddha said, regard someone who points out your faults as someone who's pointing out treasure, because there's your opportunity to see something you may have missed in your own behavior. And only then can you do something about it. Years back, about a month after John Fuang passed away, I went to pay my respects to John Mahabua. I went along with another more senior monk from Marasokaram, whose students drove us there. And in the course of being with John Mahabua for half an hour, I got criticized three times. And when we left, the other monk said to me, you know, I've visited John Mahabua, I don't know how many times, he's never criticized me once. I'm jealous. That's the right attitude to have. We're here to learn. And the Buddha's idea of a safe environment is one in which you can learn about your faults and have space to work on them. Sometimes we hear nowadays people saying they'd like a safe environment where everything is non-judgmental and nobody makes any criticisms, nobody says anything challenging. That's an unsafe environment, because it leaves you where you are, and where you are is suffering. A safe environment is where someone you trust points out things, gives you an opportunity to look at yourself in a new light and to learn. The safety there is you're not simply left to your own devices. Because the people who leave you don't pass judgment on you. They're, they basically don't care. You can do what you want. It's, it's fine with me, they say. But do they care where your actions are going to lead you?
is part of the issue is learning how to care yourself about the results of your actions. This is a very basic principle in the Dharma. It's a quality of mind, quality of heart that the Buddha calls otapa. Translated as compunction. That's when you think of doing something, and you know that's going to be unskillful, and you realize, I don't want to have to deal with the results of something unskillful. It's basically a belief in the principle of karma combined with right resolve that you want to avoid creating more unskillful things than is necessary. And in some of the suttas is paired with atapa, ardency. We don't just try to avoid unskillful things, but you try to develop skillful things in their place. And you're really serious about it. It's this quality of being serious about wanting to improve yourself. That's proven when you're willing to take criticism. If you don't take criticism, or don't take it well, how serious are you about really wanting to practice the Dharma? We're fortunate we have this place here where people have provided the necessities for practicing. And sometimes it gets too easy just to take it for granted. It's a real privilege to be here. And we should make ourselves worthy of that privilege. And appreciate all the effort that's gone into creating this place, maintaining this place. So we work on our own behavior. That's all they ask. Work on our own behavior and also treat one another well. Treat one another with kindness. Treat one another with concern. and treat our own actions with kindness and concern. That is, kindness here doesn't mean just playing along with your defilements. It means acting, speaking, thinking in ways that will not cause harm. You're not apathetic, you're not callous. You're concerned about the results of your actions, because what else do you have as your refuge? That chant we often repeat, the world is without shelter, there's no one in charge. If our actions are not our shelter, what shelter do we have? And as with any shelter, if it's falling apart or it's missing big pieces, you should welcome the opportunity to find some pieces to replace the missing parts. So what this comes down to is criticism should be taken well. The monks have a rule that if someone criticizes them, they have to show respect. Even if the criticism is wrong, they still show respect. They might not necessarily follow the advice of the person criticizing them. But still, they show respect, in case someday that person might have something that really is useful to say. Because even sometimes crazy people have some lucid insights every now and then. So just because someone has offered bad criticism in the past doesn't mean you should show disrespect, because that just shuts up that possible conduit to something that might actually be good. So simply tell yourself, whatever that person's motives, whether they're well-meaning or ill-meaning, at least the person is concerned enough to say something. And then you take it back and you consider it. And when you can consider it in fairness and not get upset about the fact that you were criticized, then you're more likely to take advantage of the fact that we are here practicing together. And sometimes it requires other people's eyes to see you in ways that you can't see yourself. 